you need to know this before you take your magnesium supplement. What is the best magnesium supplement to take? Because there are many. A lot of people are potentially taking the wrong one and not getting the full benefits of this amazing mineral magnesium. Magnesium is a vital mineral for our bodies for energy production, you know, ATP to keep our bodies running for our muscles, our nerves, our brain, our heart blood pressure regulation, blood sugar regulation, so it's important in diabetes, sleep, anxiety, I mean the list goes on. I honestly don't know why doctors aren't screaming this from the rooftops. Take your magnesium, take your magnesium, take your magnesium. Am I alone over here? I hope you get the message. I heard you loud and clear in the comments asking what type of magnesium is the best to take. So today we are going to cover the top seven types or forms of magnesium, break it down really easily, cover the pros and cons of each so that you can make the best decision for yourself. Wait. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I'm just taking my magnesium supplement because psst, some of you said Well, magnesium actually can give you more energy. It can calm you down if you have anxiety and help calm your brain, but it also helps with fatigue and energy. So, but really those comments made me laugh. I loved reading all your comments and really I'm just so excited to help share my health knowledge with you and empower you to make changes in your life. Now back to the video. The quick answer to what is the best magnesium supplement is unfortunately, it depends. It depends on your specific needs. There are many types of magnesium and what they are is usually elemental magnesium. So that's in everything. And then it's usually bound to something, usually a different type of amino acid and whatever it's bound to will actually potentially change how the magnesium is absorbed, maybe what kind of side effects it has, how it will function. So there are some magnesium supplements that are really good for anxiety, for example, and insomnia to help keep you calm. And then there's others that are really good for constipation. So you need to know which ones are good for what. I will also tell you what my favorite is and the one I typically like to recommend and the one that I actually personally take myself. Spoiler, I actually take two different types, yes. So we'll get into that. Okay, we're gonna start off with a banger here. Magnesium citrate. So magnesium citrate is elemental magnesium bound to citric acid. Citric acid is actually what's naturally found in fruits like citrus fruits, like clementines, you know? Gotta love me some clementines or maybe Dr. Clementine. The reason magnesium citrate is a really great option is because the citrate that's bound to the magnesium makes it really absorbable by your body. So it's highly absorbable by your body. And actually our bodies do not absorb magnesium very well. In fact, only about 30 to 40% of the magnesium we take in is absorbed. The rest is excrete it out, okay? So you're not gonna be getting all the magnesium you take in. And certain types of magnesium that are out on the market, you have to be careful because they don't get absorbed very well. And we're gonna talk about those later on, but magnesium citrate is one of the ones that is absorbed very well by your body. So it's an excellent option because of that. So it's an all around great magnesium supplement. It will be great if you're looking to use it for just a general deficiency. If you're trying to target muscle cramps, help with blood pressure regulation, blood sugar regulation, if you have diabetes or pre-diabetes. But one key thing you need to know about magnesium citrate, and this can be a good or a bad thing depending on what your needs are. It can have a laxative effect. In fact, it can be used to treat constipation. So this can be a pro if you have issues with bowel movements and you need a little bit of help in that department, this could be really great for you because it can help bring water into the intestine so it can help soften your stool, make things go down a lot easier. But for some people, it can cause some GI symptoms, some gastrointestinal symptoms, right? So it can cause some diarrhea, some abdominal cramps, things you don't want. So you definitely want to take this into consideration when deciding to take magnesium citrate or a different one. If you have constipation or you need a little bit of help with your bowel movements, this is a great option. But if you have a sensitive stomach and you find you're reactive to the magnesium citrate, it gives you side effects like diarrhea, then you might want to consider the next one I'm gonna talk about, which arguably is my favorite, and that is magnesium glycinate. Clearly you can tell I'm excited about this one. So magnesium glycinate is amazing, truly. It is very well absorbed. So it's one of the best absorbable forms of magnesium, and that's because it is, again, elemental magnesium bound to the amino acid glycine, and glycine really helps it 
be absorbed by your body. So you're gonna get more of that magnesium. Both magnesium citrate and magnesium glycinate will be well absorbed by your body. A key amazing property of magnesium glycinate and one of the things that a lot of people love taking it for is that it's known to actually have really positive effects for things like anxiety, depression, insomnia, calming people down, helping deal with stress. And the reason for this is because it's a double threat. I guess triple, yeah, a double threat, not a triple threat. Magnesium, even just in of itself, magnesium helps your central nervous system calm down. Is that glycine also is a powerhouse there. It helps calm neurons firing in your brain. So it helps calm your central nervous system. Together, they are like the power couple everyone strives to be. They really will help your nervous system from being overstimulated. And this is why this particular type of magnesium is great to take before bed because it can help you unwind and it can help you get a deeper and more restful sleep. I highly recommend this form to anyone struggling with mental health issues, anxiety. It really is amazing. And there's actually a good amount of evidence supporting that. And magnesium glycinate is also going to give you the other benefits from magnesium that you might want. Like if you struggle with muscle cramps, if you want to improve your heart health, uh, diabetes, sugar regulation, blood pressure regulation, anti-inflammatory properties. So it's all around an amazing form of magnesium and you don't get the gastrointestinal side effects. So that's one of the key things that a lot of people like this form for is because it's very gentle on the stomach. So if you're, if you have a sensitive stomach or you've taken magnesium in the past and it just didn't sit well with you, gave you diarrhea, abdominal cramps, all those nasty things, this one is going to likely be good for you because in most people it's very well tolerated. And the next few that we are going to talk about, if you have specific symptoms you want to target like fatigue or fibromyalgia or cognitive function, memory, some of the next ones are newer and have very exciting new research coming out suggesting they could work for these specific purposes. So one of those is magnesium L3 and You may have heard of this one because it's kind of in a class of its own. It, this one is really actually getting me excited. It is newer, so there's still more research that's needed. It's magnesium bound to the amino acid threonine. So what is really exciting about this one is that it potentially crosses the blood brain barrier. So what I mean by that is it potentially gets into your brain. So that's a good thing. So it could be great for things like cognition, learning, improving memory, again, anxiety and depression, just overall brain health. Early studies have shown that it can increase the level of magnesium specifically in your brain. So this is different than some of the other forms of magnesium. They aren't necessarily thought to cross the blood brain barrier. This one is also well tolerated by most people in that it doesn't have a lot of gastrointestinal or digestive side effects. But the downside to this one, like I said, is the research is still new and this baby is pricey. I mean, the bottle I have is 40 plus dollars. So keep that in mind, this is a pricey one. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one for the majority of people, but if you're really interested in trying a newer form of magnesium and you really want to target cognition, learning, memory, some of these brain health things, then this might be a great option for you to try. Next, magnesium malate. So that's magnesium bound to malic acid, which is naturally found in fruits like apples. There are some studies showing specifically that it could be helpful with energy production. So production of ATP. So there's some studies, early studies again, and small studies suggesting that it could help people with fatigue or pain, like muscle and joint pain, specifically people who have fibromyalgia. They may benefit from magnesium malate, but if you're someone who has fibromyalgia or a lot of chronic pain, muscle joint pain, or a lot of fatigue, and maybe you've tried the other magnesium forms, you could try magnesium malate and see if it helps. Next, magnesium orotate. So it's magnesium bound to erotic acid. I said erotic with an O, not erotic, okay? Some studies are showing that it could be useful for athletes specifically because it might help with endurance in athletic sports and also energy production and help with muscles and heart health. So it seems like it could potentially be a good option for athletes looking to improve those things. It seems to really benefit the mitochondria in our cells, which, you know, are the powerhouse of our cells that are responsible for energy. But again, there's limited research and it is a little bit more expensive. Definitely things to consider. And again, not the main one I would recommend for someone with a magnesium deficiency, unless you're looking to boost like energy, endurance, and athletic performance. Next, you may have heard of magnesium taurate. So that's magnesium bound to the amino acid taurine. 
small studies, mostly animal studies, they're showing some promise specifically in regulating blood pressure, but that's in animal studies, so yet to see. But it seems like it might be good for blood pressure regulation, cholesterol, heart health, blood sugar, and diabetes management. Next is one you might see in a lot of places. This is a very common one on the market, magnesium oxide. So the reason this one is so common, you'll actually see it a lot in multivitamins. That's because it's really cheap. It's probably the cheapest form of magnesium, but it's not very well absorbed at all. This is magnesium bound to oxide and it actually doesn't make it soluble for our body. So our body actually excretes most of it. It does not absorb well at all. And since you're not absorbing a lot of it, it makes it difficult to correct a magnesium deficiency. So this is not one I would recommend to people trying to correct a magnesium deficiency or get benefits from magnesium supplementation because you're just not gonna absorb a lot of it, honestly. But it does have some uses, which can be good or bad again. It does have a laxative effect. So if you're taking this one, especially at higher doses, be careful because you might be getting an unwanted surprise or maybe wanted, I mean. So magnesium oxide helps bring water into the intestines, so it will help stimulate a bowel movement. We actually often can use magnesium oxide for constipation treatment. I do not recommend this one to the majority of people looking to supplement because like I said, it's not absorbed very well and it causes these gastrointestinal effects, like it has laxative effects, which for most people are not going to be what they want, but it is really cheap. So if it is the only one you can afford, then get it and do your best with it. And if you can get one of the other ones, then I would definitely suggest that way more over this one. I do wanna make a quick note on another type of magnesium that I saw some people mention in the comments, and that's magnesium sulfate. This is Epsom salts, right? So a lot of people will take Epsom salt baths, and that's with magnesium sulfate. So you can can actually absorb magnesium through the skin. That's totally fine to do, but you're not gonna get that much of a high level of magnesium through Epsom salt baths, unless you're like soaking in the bath for a long time, which you probably don't wanna be doing. Okay, so overall, what is the best form of magnesium for most people looking to correct a magnesium deficiency? Well, I would say either magnesium glycinate or magnesium citrate. Both of these are solid options with great absorbability of magnesium by your body, so you're gonna get a good dosage from them, and they also will help you with a wide range of symptoms. I would make your decision based on specific symptoms you're trying to target, but either of these honestly will be a great bet for most people. If you're trying to decide between magnesium citrate and magnesium glycinate, I would make my decision based on two things whether I'm trying to target constipation, so if I want a laxative effect, then I might lean to magnesium citrate because that has a laxative effect. But if I have kind of a sensitive stomach, and then I'm gonna probably choose magnesium glycinate. And secondly, if I want to target anxiety, depression, insomnia, these mental health issues, calming effect, then I would definitely go for magnesium glycinate. And in terms of the other ones, like I mentioned, they're more for specific needs. So if you really wanna target your cognition, memory, learnings, maybe go ahead and try magnesium L3 and 8. And if you have fibromyalgia or muscle joint pain, fatigue, then you might wanna try magnesium malate and test it out. If you're an athlete, you might want to go for magnesium orotate. Again, special needs, you can make your decision based on your symptoms. But for the majority of people, you'll be great with magnesium glycinate or magnesium citrate. And if you want to know which one I take, I take magnesium glycinate. That's the one I take regularly most nights. I take it before bed. That's when I would recommend you take magnesium glycinate because of its calming effect and help with sleep. So I love that one. And I do sometimes take the really pricey one and I cry inside every time I drop a pill. <laughs> but sometimes I will take magnesium L3 and 8 because I am excited about the possible cognitive effects that it can have. And I do find it has benefits for me. So I will sometimes kind of add that one in. But if you are thinking about combining forms of magnesium, you can do it, but you need to be cautious. There are actually supplements you can buy that combine different forms of magnesium and those are great. They'll, they'll pre kind of decide the dosage for you so, so you don't go above the recommended dose of magnesium. So I've seen some supplements on the market with a combination of glycinate and uh, citrate or if you wanna try mixing them yourself, if you're feeling really fancy, you can do that, but just make sure you don't go over the recommended dose not to go above, just that you might have more side effects. And again, if you're taking it daily, you don't wanna be taking a high dose uh, because it is possible to overdose on magnesium if you're supplementing too high. So if you are combining different forms of magnesium, just make sure the total dose is not above the maximum. But I would say for most people, 
keep it simple and sweet and just stick to one form of magnesium, magnesium glycinate or magnesium citrate, and you'll get great effects and magnesium will do its job. We also need to talk about are there forms of magnesium that you should stay away from? And yes, there are. So like I mentioned, magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salts, it's more used as a laxative if you're taking it orally. Yes, you can take it orally. I do not recommend that in general for magnesium deficiency. It's more for short-term constipation to help with a, you know, a laxative effect. So not one I would recommend for magnesium deficiency. Also in general, I would not suggest magnesium oxide unless that's the only one you can get or magnesium hydroxide, because both of those are more so for constipation for a laxative effect rather than to correct a magnesium deficiency. I need to give you a quick piece of advice that I find is usually missing in these videos. And that is, if you are deficient in magnesium, really any type of magnesium is gonna be better than no magnesium for you. If you can only get the one that's really cheap for whatever reason, don't feel bad about that. Still gonna do the work of getting magnesium. It might not be the most effective and you might have a few side effects here and there depending on the one you choose, but in the end, it's still going to be better than no magnesium if you need magnesium. No evil form of magnesium. There's some that are better and there's some that are worse, but in the end, if you need magnesium, get your magnesium, all right? We have talked about a lot today, but wait, there is still more that I want to tell you about magnesium. There's a lot of practical tips that I can pass on to you that can help you with your magnesium absorption, such as dosage, timing, what to take it with, what to not take it with, good magnesium rich foods. So I am going to do another video on magnesium soon on my channel. So give this video a thumbs up if you learned something, if you enjoyed it. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can become the healthiest and best version of yourself. Let's do it together.